Okay, let's do a bunch of these examples here on this uh, sequences worksheet. Um, it says for all of these, uh, the formula for the, the terms of the sequence is given. Determine if the sequence converges or diverges. And if it converges, find the limit. So basically on all of these, we're going to be evaluating the limit of the function and seeing what we get. Uh, a bunch of these really should be stuff that you've seen from Calc 1. If, you've, um, if, if you're a little rusty on that stuff, I will link in a video below that is um, from my Calc 1 class that uh, goes over more stuff about finding these limits. So let's, uh, let's get started. Again, on all of these, we're taking the limit of whatever these functions are as n goes to infinity. And I'm going to do these by looking at the dominant term on top and bottom. Dominant term is the thing that grows fastest. So let's start with 1. Uh, on 1 here, the dominant term on top is n. Well, it's the only one, so it has to be the dominant term. On the bottom, we've got 2n and we've got negative 1. So a linear and a constant. The linear is going to be the, the dominant term there. So as n goes to infinity, this thing is going to go to 1 half. So that tells us that the sequence converges to 1 half. Okay, the next one. We've got a polynomial here on top. We've got a quadratic over a quadratic. So our dominant terms here are going to be this one on top and this one on bottom. When n goes to infinity, this is going to go to 4. So to be clear about what I'm doing, when you're taking a limit as n goes to infinity, this doesn't work for limits going to finite numbers, but when n is going to infinity, you can look at the dominant term on top and bottom, and you can ignore everything else. So get rid of everything else, just look at the dominant term on top and bottom, and you can essentially cancel the n squareds here. So that's how I get the 4. So let's, let's keep going. This next one, we've got n is our dominant term on top, and n squared is our, 2n squared is our dominant term on bottom. So we can eliminate everything else. And what happens when n goes to infinity? Well, we can cancel this, and we're left with just uh, 1 over 2n. And when n goes to infinity there, the top stays at 1, the bottom goes to infinity, so you get 0. Here. My cat is uh, complaining. Okay, seven. This this one's an interesting one because it's got this um, it's got this negative one to the n on the front. So how do we deal with that? Well, to begin with, ignore it. We'll pretend it's not there. So our dominant term on what's left here is n and uh, n on bottom as well. So if we're ignoring that negative one this thing is going to go to go to 1. And so that means that our terms eventually will be 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. But this right here is going to make them alternate. So eventually we get terms that are negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, and so on. So this is basically jumping back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1. It's never approaching any one particular number. So therefore, this diverges. The limit and the sequence diverge. Okay, this next one is kind of interesting. I'm going to copy it and come down here where I've got a little more room to play with it. So sine of n pi over 2 over n. So the bottom is going to grow to infinity, but the top we've got a sine. And notice, trig functions aren't on this list over here. So how do we deal with the trig function? Well, we've got to look and see what sine does. I'm going to graph sine. So we know what sine looks like. It looks like this. It keeps going forever. Now, the top. The, the top here, our numerator, is sine of n pi over 2. So it's taken the sine of the, the sine at the different multiples of pi over 2. So that's going to be, let's see, this is 0. That's pi and that's 2 pi. 
So pi over 2 is going to be here. 3 pi over 2. So we're basically taking the, for our numerator, we're taking the y coordinates of all these black dots I'm drawing. So it's going to go between, you know, 1, uh, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and so on. So let's write this out. The terms of this thing Now, we can't really start here at zero because if we start with this one, our top value is zero and our bottom value is n, which is also zero. So we've got to start this one at one. So our first term is going to come from here. So what's our value there? That's going to be 1. And our numerator, or our denominator is 1. Let's go ahead and write in the denominators. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And these are going to come from here. So we're going to have 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, and so on. All right. So if you look at this and think about what's happening, Our numerator is always 0, 1, or negative 1, but our denominator is increasing. So what's going to happen if we were to actually graph this whole function instead of just the top part? If we were to graph it, it would look like, um, it would look like, let's see, the first one's going to be 1, 0, negative a third. It, it, it's, it's actually going to follow, it's going to be various points on this graph. And that graph is approaching zero, even though it kind of zigzags across it. It gets closer and closer to zero as time goes on. So this one is going to converge to zero. All right, uh, 11. On top, we've got an exponential. On bottom, we've got a polynomial. So exponentials according to our rabbit and turtle chart, exponentials always outrun polynomials. So this is going to diverge to infinity. And if you wanted to, you could graph that and see that uh, if, if you graphed um, e to the x over x squared, you're going to see a graph that takes off really fast. All right, this next one. This one, on top, we've got an exponential, and on bottom, we've got an exponential. And one thing you look at and say here, this is going to be a, um, this is going to be an alternating series because of the negative. And so, since the bottom exponential has a larger base, this is going to converge to zero. Now, another way you could look at that is you could say, well. A sub n here, I could rewrite that as negative pi over 4 to the n. And if you think about what happens, pi over 4, pi over 4 is less than 1. So when you start raising it to powers, it's going to shrink. So um, this is going to converge to 0. And we can use that same logic here on 15. The A sub n is 1 plus 0.9 to the n. If you think about what happens when n goes to infinity, the 1 is going to just stay as 1. But this, over here, 0.9 to the n, when you start raising that to larger and larger powers, it's going to shrink to 0. So this is going to converge to 1. You know, if you want to, you can look at this on Desmos. I've already graphed it here. If you graph uh, 1 plus 0.9 to the x, and you look at what happens to this graph, as we go over further and further, the y-coordinate is approaching 1. In fact, by the time we get up here to like, yeah, once we're above 70, Desmos can't even tell the difference in uh, the actual y-coordinate in 1. And you can do this on all of these. I'll tell you what let's do. Well, I've got Desmos up. Let's go back and graph, um, let's graph this sine one. 
sine of n pi over 2 over n. We're going to have to write this as sine of x pi over 2. All of that on top of x. And where I've got this scrolled out now, and you can see this is going down to zero. Let's scroll in and look at it. You've got um, you've got this, and notice all these uh, dots here are the actual values that we're looking at. But as this thing goes to infinity, this thing's really starting to hug the axis, and the values are all very close to zero. You can graph any of these if you want to to double check them. Um, I'll tell you what, let's see. Let's let's graph uh, problem seven as well. Negative one to the n times a uh, that. This one might not look very nice. Let's see. We've got n over. Well, it's fine to put all of it on the top. When you graph that. Yeah, it can't even, oh, it doesn't like the ends. Negative one to the x times x over x plus one. Yeah, it still won't graph it. The reason is uh, when you start raising negative one to x, there are certain values of x that are gonna break it. Like if you put in, uh, if x were one half, you'd get an imaginary number here. And that would also happen at one fourth, one eighth. It would happen in infinitely many places, and that's why Desmos isn't graphing that one for us. All right, let's do this. Uh, let's do seventeen. On seventeen, we've got natural log of n over n. Now, natural log of n over n, you've got a natural log on top, and this down here says that uh, a polynomial, which this is, is always going to be faster than a log. So if you've got the faster thing on bottom, it's going to converge to zero. And just for fun, let, let's graph that one too. If I put in y equals natural log x, uh, again, y equals natural log x over um, x, yeah, you can see this thing goes to zero. It's a little bit slow, but if you come out here to you know something big, the number is getting smaller and smaller. All right, so that's about half of these. This video is getting kind of long, so I will uh, I think I'll stop here, and uh, we'll do some more examples in the next video.